the Honourable Member for Kildonan St. Paul's. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and I'm honoured to be able to stand and recognise and support Motion M111 to declare the second week of September as Mennonite Heritage Week, an overdue recognition of the Mennonite communities and their important com contributions to Canada. Mennonites fled Europe as refugees, fled persecution, fled because they had beliefs that others didn't. They were persecuted because they were pacifists, and they moved from one country to another. In 1566, the Mennonites were scattered over Germany to the because of the persecution of their culture. The very first group of Mennonites to arrive in Manitoba came from Eastern Europe. And when I go door to door and meet many uh, Mennonites in my community, they now say proudly, we came from Ukraine. And that we can share that history. As we know, many Mennonites came from Russian-occupied Ukraine, where their homes and properties were confiscated. Um, Mennonites arrived uh, in reserves uh, in 1874. They had a special agreement with the Government of Canada, and they settled on reserves on the east and west side of the Red River. In 1923, the federal government opens it, opened their doors to the Mennonite immigration, and communities were eager to find new lives in the Canadian prairies. Between 1923 and 1929, over 25,000 Mennonites managed to immigrate to Canada. Through selfless action, the Mennonite community is known for their service to the community. Mennonite families and organizations have worked tirelessly to settle newcomers to Canada, and their work deserves to be recognized and appreciated. These are people that are willing to give of their own time, of their own savings, their own dedication, and uh, go out of their way to help other refugees and immigrants settle in Canada. In fact, Min the Mennonite community is one of the largest private refugee sponsorship groups in Canada. Today, almost 200,000 Mennonites call Canada their home. Winnipeg has one of the largest urban Mennonite populations in the world, with more than 20,000 Mennonites and 45 Mennonite churches. There's over seven in my riding alone. Many of my constituents in Kildon and St. Paul's Mennonite community have a dedicated history of supporting and welcoming newcomers, sponsoring hundreds of new Canadian families since the private refugee sponsorship began. And I've had many families and many members be very concerned about those individuals that are fleeing the um, United States looking for a haven in Canada with tolerance and being open-minded and questioning why anybody would want to block the border at uh, Emerson or look at somehow blocking people from coming to Canada, saying that in their history and their tradition is one of opening their arms and welcoming people to Manitoba, not blocking them. I find this a particularly heartwarming and fitting, given that this year is also the 40th anniversary of the private refugee sponsorship program. By the end of the Vietnam War, the Mennonite Central Committee negotiated a groundbreaking agreement with Ottawa to match the Vietnamese refugees with private sponsors and brought them to Canada as permanent residents. Based on these agreements, the federal government introduced the Private Refugee Sponsorship Program. And this will allow groups of five eligible to sponsor refugees directly. Even now, I have families and organization asking if Canada would increase the number of refugees and private sponsorships that Canada would take. And since 1979 to 2018, approximately 12,000 people have arrived in Canada through MCC's Canada's Private Refugee Sponsorship Program. That's a program that helped individuals with intense needs with no cost to government, providing often the supports necessary for those families to be on their feet and proudly paying taxes uh, within months, Madam Speaker, 
something that we can inspire to and support 100%. It's only through these dedicated partners like the Mennonite Central Committee that the federal government, our liberal government, was able to resettle 25,000 Syrian refugees that were escaping conflict. And many of them live in Kildone and St. Paul. And many of them are members of the local Mennonite church, active members, volunteers, building community, hand in hand. And if I quote from the Winnipeg Free Press article on the anniversary of the private refugee sponsorship this year, many of us, it says, many of us at the time also came as immigrants to this country and in refugee-like conditions. We're absolutely paying it forward. That's a philosophy you see in Kildone and St. Paul. Winnipeg's Mennonites have contributed greatly to Canadian society, helping to build our city and grow our multicultural community. Madam Speaker, the Mennonite community in Winnipeg built the Mennonite Hospital, now known as Concordia Hospital, in northeast Winnipeg, which was run and funded and carried and supported by the Mennonite community and now unfortunately is going through drastic changes and I know many of the community are looking to support that facility because it's very special to them um, since they created it and supported it, the Mennonite Hospital of Winnipeg. Back in my hometown of Winnipeg, the Mennonite community have established many well-known, reputable manufacturing industries, such as price industries. Uh, low in, we have others like Palliser Furniture, which makes a point of helping, providing an opportunity for Indigenous, for refugees, for women to have an opportunity to work. So the charity and the goodwill and the ability to help goes not only at home during, for, for charities, but also in the workplace. And we all have had a triple E motorhome or a trailer that we've taken on a camping trip, or we've had those excellent low end windows or doors, which are the finest in, I'd argue, perhaps the world. Um, it was through these very entrepreneurial business owners, I remember them saying that their mission, and I think they were a group of entrepreneurs from Morden, Morden-Winkler area, and they said, we've made a commitment to create a job for every single graduate from our high school. And you know, Madam Speaker, that was a reality. Instead of allowing young people or, or having them move away from the community, they built the resources, they built the dream, and they've probably doubled their population since that time when they came to me. I was Minister of Industry and they, we were looking at supporting the Mennonite community with their growth strategy. So uh, it's about compassion, it's about an entrepreneurship, and it's about making a difference. The time-honored, community-oriented Mennonite-operated companies like these have made contributions to small communities and large communities. In fact, one of them is a brand new industry, um, and um, it's called Delta 9, and it's growing uh, very successfully uh, legalized uh, cannabis. Uh, in my area, and, and uh, we were very happy to help them out as well. So, Madam Speaker, it's incredibly fitting that the second week of September was chosen to be Mennonite Heritage Week, being the traditional time when the Mennonite Central Committee relief, relief sales are held every year in Canada and the U.S. It's my hope that during this time we celebrate Mennonite heritage in Canada. We work together in service of our communities and celebrate our diversity. Thank you, Madam Speaker.